Hello everyone, this is Ian Colling, Head Teacher. Welcome to our Information for Parents video for 2021. I'm going to cover these key areas in the course of this presentation and then your child's head of year will then give you some details about the year ahead. Whilst the pandemic is far from over, this term does see the resumption of normal school practices. As you'll know from emails sent last term, the staggered breaks will continue at Magdalen, but everybody will now start school at 8.45 and finish at 3.10 each day. You'll see on the school's website the exact timings of the school day and what time lessons are and the year group break times. This is on the general section of the website under key information, school day. Please do look at other areas of the school website, which we work very hard to keep up to date so you can see all the information that you need. Our intention is to provide an exceptional education for all of our students. Our vision sets this out in more detail and it's divided into these key areas. You can find this under the general section of our school website. We wrote the vision following our Ofsted inspection, which took place in February of 2020, just before the first lockdown. And we've considered very carefully all the areas of the school's practices that we want to develop further to drive towards that exceptional education for all. What you'll find in that document is that we are now in year two of our vision implementation and we're working hard during this year to continue the um, excellent work that was begun in the last academic year. Please take the time to read that and you will see the various different aspects of the work that we're developing. Right at the centre of our work is our curriculum. And this includes not just the subject curriculum, but the wider development of our students, which includes all of their personal development, the pastoral care, personal social health education, careers advice and guidance, relationship, sex and health education, and also includes the educational visits and the extracurricular provision. Work will be done this year to re-establish some of that wider curriculum, much of which was put on hold because of restrictions caused by the pandemic. We aim to ensure that teaching continues to drive forward in practice and that the personal development and leadership underpin what we do in the school to ensure that all students are well supported and that the school is well led. Developing our staff is clearly pivotal to make sure that everybody who is new to the school understands their role in the school and the direction the school is travelling, but also that existing staff continue to develop their practices. Over the course of this summer, significant changes have taken place in our facilities. We're absolutely delighted that we've managed to open our new building, which is part of Wadhams, and so is using that same name. It's where our music department is housed and where you'll also find lessons in history and also PCSHE. It's a fantastic new building and I hope that parents will have the opportunity to see that at some point during this year when you come in for parents' evenings or other evening events. The other areas that we've been working on are to develop our food technology rooms and that work will continue this term and we've also got repair work going on on our roofs to replace many of the roofing areas to make sure that we have fewer leaks and that the building is fit for purpose as we enter the winter months. We're really grateful to our staff and the contractors for the hard work that they've been doing and I hope that you will see significant changes and improvements in the premises as we go forward in the next few months. As I've mentioned, COVID is still present in our communities. We therefore need to adopt a proportionate approach to keeping ourselves safe. So my request to everybody is to undertake their own personal responsibility to undertake lateral flow tests to make sure that if you identify as having COVID that you keep yourself in isolation. There is no longer a requirement for anybody to isolate who is living in the household of someone with COVID and that includes anybody under the age of 18 or any adult who has had both jabs. In school we will continue to ventilate the building periodically to make sure that that is happening on a regular basis throughout the school day and also to encourage everybody to adopt good hand hygiene. 
the wearing of masks is no longer a requirement. If people wish to wear masks to school, then they are welcome to do so, but it is not an expectation. We recognise that the effects of the pandemic have been very varied for different people, and some people may feel safer wearing a mask, or they may feel that they are at risk if they don't. That's their personal choice, and we respect that. But please be aware of the fact we will not be requiring everybody to wear masks unless our risk assessment suggests that the levels of the pandemic are too high and we need to take additional actions. We will, of course, pay heed to the government guidance as and when that changes as we go through this term and into the future. Our aim is to make sure we keep in regular contact with parents as we have done over the last couple of years. We know that good communication is really effective and it's important that everybody feels that they know what's going on in the school and they know where to get information that they need. Please use our website as the starting point for any questions that you may have. You may well find the answers on there. If that doesn't give you the answer that you need, then you will want to contact school. And here are some of the key people that you may wish to speak to to find out specific information. In relation to pastoral support, your child's PSA is the starting point, the pastoral support assistant. Our colleagues in the pastoral team are not teachers and therefore they're more likely to be able to speak to you on the telephone during the working day. Form tutors and leaders of learning are teachers and so they will be teaching for throughout most of the day but if you can't get the information you need from the PSA then they may well be the place to go um, as the next port of call. If you have subject specific questions please talk to subject teachers or to heads of relevant faculties and the contact details of all of those people you will find again on the website. Members of the senior team are listed here with their key responsibilities and again contact details you'll see on the website. Please to help us deal with your inquiry try to contact the right person for the right sort of question and in particular try to avoid sending an email to lots of different staff because that makes it much more difficult for us to manage in school. If you're unhappy with the response that you get when you speak to a member of staff and you haven't got the answer you need or the right solution, please do escalate and do speak to a member of the senior team. And if that still doesn't give you what you need, then please contact me as the head teacher. It's usually simple to find the information you, that you need or to have something you're unhappy about resolved by talking to the key people that work closely with your child in the first instance. But I do know that sometimes uh, people feel that they wish to share that more um, at a more senior level and therefore you're invited to contact senior staff should that be necessary. Hello and thank you for taking the time to watch and listen to this information PowerPoint this evening. I'm Mrs Bowers and I'm Director of Sixth Form and I'm really hoping that at some point this year we'll actually be able to meet face to face. But for the time being, just to give you some overview information for what's coming up, as your children start their journey into sixth form. So we had some really good results in the summer with a high number of our students getting to their university of choice or certainly getting their second choice. So that's been a real success for them coming out of a time of quite a lot of uncertainty and a lot of disruption in their time to A levels. So we hope to continue that success this year. We had record numbers of students taking EPQ this year. Uh, in year 12 and we are continuing with students taking EPQ which I will talk about later uh, this year as well. We've had a growth in sixth form we are currently uh, 132 so that's a big increase on last year's 125 so we are growing each year but don't worry we still have lots of space for people lots of dedicated staff to help them out so it's a great thing that the sixth form is growing. So some things in sixth form are different to do with attendance, but some things have stayed the same. Registration is still compulsory every morning at 8.45. During these slots, this is when we deliver the assemblies. We also deliver lots of information that they need for success in sixth form. We do the UCAS work through this time and they do PSHE. They also do fun interactive quizzes um, together as a tutor group and it's where their tutors get to know them. Their tutors are going to be writing the references, so it's a really important time. We need to make sure they attend all of them. 
They need to make sure they are on time and attend all timetabled lessons as well. So if you look at their go timetable, you will see there's various codes in different boxes. Where there is a lesson code, that is something they have to attend. If it's blank, that is a free and they are able to go off site during those sessions. However, they do need to sign out if they leave site and sign back in when they return. If they manage to accrue 10 minutes or more late in a week, they will end up with a sanction. So it's really important that students are on time for all lessons and registrations. There is a dedicated attendance line and email address for sixth form. So please make sure that you copy down those from this slide so that you know who to ring and who to speak to should there be any problems with attendance, if your child is sick, or if they need to book a day off for something like a university visit, they will need to fill in a form which you will need to sign and return. We have high expectations of our sixth form students for which we make no excuses. We really do expect them to be role models around the school. We expect them to be dressing appropriately. We expect them to be using appropriate language and to be following all the codes of conduct that we have in school, particularly surrounding the mobile phone use and when crossing the road, etc. The younger students really do look up to them. So it's about them making sure they're doing the right thing. We also have much more of a um, expectation that we communicate directly with them. So they are expected to check their emails daily. They are expected to speak directly to members of staff should they have issues in their lessons. That could be via email or face to face. If they need help with that, please get them to come and see us. But we do communicate with them directly. Of course, you can still get in touch with us if you have any issues, um, but we do try to get them to take control because they are moving towards being young adults. However, for those that do struggle to become young adults, we do still have the sanctions process in place. Now, detentions are slightly different this year. They still have the five teacher detentions. So once they have exhausted those or if they have done something that warrants a further sanction, they could well be put into one of the after school detentions. These will run on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday after school, and they will be for either 30 minutes or one hour. They will get 48 hours notice, as will you, via email, and it's up to them to make sure that they are in that detention. So as I touched on briefly earlier, we do have a dress code in SIP form. It's not particularly strict, but there are things that are allowed and are not allowed, which are detailed here on this slide. The green things are allowed, the red are not. We do ask that students follow this dress code, you know, it is the expectation of sixth form that they are following it. And if we do have to discuss with them their clothing, then it may mean that they have to go home to get changed. This is because we expect them to be dressed suitably for sixth form according to our dress code. One of the things that is slightly different in sixth form, students are allowed to use their mobile phones in the TGC, which is their study centre. They are also allowed to use them in their designated areas up at top site. They should not have their mobile phone on or ear pods in at any other time. So only the TGC or the designated area. So it's just about making sure that they are following those codes of conduct to make sure they are good role, role models for younger students. Students may well start to learn to drive over the course of the next year. So it's just about reminding them if they are going to drive, they have to park at St. John's behind the chapel. They cannot drive between sites. This is because there is nowhere for them to park in the car parks once they leave St. John's. And we do not want to clog up the neighbourhood with parking sick formers around. They will need to arrive at school by 8.35 if they're driving to avoid running over any students and they cannot leave until 3.25 for the same reason. So if students choose to drive, it's about making sure that they understand what the expectations of them are. One of the things you may hear students talk about is EPQ and core maths. All students in sixth form will be offered EPQ. EPQ is an extended project qualification. What it is, is an independent research project where they can produce either a dissertation, an artifact, a a performance or a field study on anything that they want to um, and this project is carried out by them and supervised by teachers so it's slightly different to a normal way of learning in that they will be given a lot more independence but while also being guided it leads to a 
A level, which can equate to UCAS points, is finished by the end of year 12, which just gives them a little bit of an extra boost when they're applying for uh, universities or apprenticeships. But also it gives them the opportunity to explore writing and dissertation, research, um, referencing, all skills that will be really, really important to them as they go through their A levels and future jobs and careers. Some students will also be studying core maths. So anyone who is studying geography, psychology, business, economics or science and not doing maths will be doing core maths. This is to ensure that they are able to cope with the content of the mathematical side of these subjects. It's taught by maths teachers and it will help them with their basic math skills to ensure that they are able to succeed in those subjects. It's really important they engage with it and that they treat it as a agreed equal importance to their other subjects because it will help them in the long run. So on this slide there is some key dates. I've just put the week beginning when they are for now and I'll let you know the actual dates nearer the time. So engagement data in October is the first thing. This is where we give data on their engagement in sixth form and their homework so far. It gives us an idea of how people are settling into sixth form. From that, we then will make a support group who will work with Mr Percival should they need to. And we're able to congratulate those that have made a really flying start to sixth form. They will be doing CATS tests. For those of you that don't know, these are tests that look at their spatial awareness, their numerical awareness, and just gives us an idea of how they learn. It allows us to flag up anyone who might need a bit more support again with sixth form. So it's nothing for them to worry about. They literally need to come do the tests as they would, because the whole point of it is that we pick up any difficulties that they might have. It is not a test to say, well, you're the best, you're the worst. It's an individual test so that we can make sure we are supporting them fully in sixth form. One of the main things that they need to get their heads around is work experience. That will happen the week before Easter. It is up to them to find a placement. And we would strongly advise they start contacting companies fairly quickly and start asking about work experience opportunities. We do have some support in school, but it is really focused on them finding their place. Mr Horner will be delivering an assembly next week to give them a bit more advice on that. Moving on to next year, we've got February, we've got apprenticeship evenings and in April UCAS information evenings. So that's thinking about their next steps once they leave school. I know it seems like, well, they've only just joined sixth form, but it goes so quickly. We start the process very early. By May, we are starting to make UCAS um, applications with year 12s. So it's about getting you to understand what the processes are for them. Parents evening is in May and their final data point will be in July. So hopefully by now you will have heard from your child's tutor and you know who they are. They are your first point of contact for anything that you might need to ask or any information you might need to relay. There is also a core sixth form team who is made up of Martin Percival, who is the study centre manager. He works with students on the kind of academic subject based work, study skills, helping with um, homework, helping with organisation, helping with their UCAS and apprenticeship applications. Kerry Chambers is the pastoral support assistant. This means she looks after their health, their well-being, their emotional um, health and anything that's not to do with their subjects and academic things. And then we have Steph Ansel, who is our administrator and attendance officer. So she deals with them being registered in the right place, having days off for various things and also any um, UCAS applications from an admin side and then myself Kirsty Bowles I'm director of sixth form so I oversee the whole of sixth form. Questions I often get asked is what can I do to support my child now they're in sixth form? One of the main things is keeping regular communication if anything changes at home or you think that your child is starting to struggle please do get in contact with us so that we are able to support them straight away. Equally please keep checking your communication so you know what's happening in sixth form. We do tend to regularly email so that people know what's happening and what opportunities are coming along. Keeping in contact with your child's go for school so you know what work it is they've got, what homework have they got, how they're getting on, those sorts of things. And talking to them about how their studies are going and encouraging them to research their next steps. As I've already said, UCAS and apprenticeships comes around very, very quickly. So the more you can encourage them to do early research, the better. 
One of the main things we would ask you to do is encourage your child to focus on their schoolwork rather than on part-time jobs. There's scientific evidence that working more than 10 hours a week has a detrimental effect on the outcome of A-level students. So we really do request that students don't work more than 10 hours a week and that their focus is on their schoolwork for the next 18 months um, because they need to get the best grades they can. I appreciate there has been a huge amount of information for you this evening. Um, hopefully it has been helpful. If you have any questions at all, please do get in touch with us using the email address on this page and marking it Year 12 Information Evening. And please don't hesitate to get in touch with us for any questions or for any clarification or anything. Thank you very much. Good evening.